Welcome back to the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. It's time to do Challenge 10, which is the second of two challenges that involve Maggie. This one is called Curse, and yeah, you can't really see it in this one level because we had another curse on top of it, but in this one challenge, we deal with the Curse of the Curse. This makes it so that every single door that leads to a non-special room is littered with spikes, so therefore you will take damage during your entire run, but hey, look at that! We have treasure rooms in this one challenge, so that's already a good thing. So in order to help out with this challenge, we play as Maggie, who starts with the highest amount of health, we start with a couple of items, which are the treasure map, the blue map, as well as the compass, which shows us the icon of where things are on the map, like where the boss room is, the treasure room, the shop, everything. And we also start with the Rolliver, which gives us two extra health. This is one of the rarest items of the entire game, as it only appears in the secret room, and that is if it wants to appear, because Almost all of the time, you'll get some other item instead. So, in overall, getting this item is kind of a pain in the butt. And the item that we found on this one floor is also Mr. Mega. We got this by bombing enough of the blue rocks, and this makes your bombs tremendously more powerful. And it also gives them a larger range in order to affect enemies. So, all in all, it's a great item. For the sake of this one challenge, however, you shouldn't use bombs during bosses. Instead, you should use them in order to be able to get to the secret rooms because sometimes you can use the secret room to travel in order to avoid damage. Because these doors will only require you that you bomb them open, so therefore you're gonna avoid the spikes that are littered all over the floor. Yep, here it is, Curse of the Curse. Yeah, because in this one challenge, just in case that it wasn't challenging enough, it's possible to have even more curses laid on top of it, and honestly, having a emetemesis pill was a pretty bad thing here. But sometimes you can also get full health pill, which is why I'm even considering doing it. Also, for this one time, I'm just going to skip right ahead and ignore this treasure room, just because it's not in the way, but to be fair, I could have gone there, because it's not as if I needed to get hit that much in order to get to it. I only needed to go back and forth one of the spike rooms in order to get hit. But in this one challenge, getting to the treasure rooms might be worth it, because... For pretty much this entire challenge, since you're going to get hit every single time as you enter these doors, you're not going to see devil rooms appear that much, unless that you lock out and get a goat head or something. This entire challenge is just a huge endurance round where you have to survive the level layout, and hope that you're not going to be screwed up too much by the layout, or, well, just have some really unfortunate thing happen, like, for instance, a Curse of the Lost, which will wipe out your entire map, which will make your treasure map, blue map, and compass completely worthless. So, if you want to make this challenge easier, the easiest way to do it will be to do this challenge before you unlock Everything is Terrible, because... Then this will make it so that you will pretty much have no curses on top of the other curse, which will make things a whole lot easier on you. But otherwise you can also farm the shop donation machine in order to be able to get to the black candle, which probably will remove all of the overlaying curses. But with that said, however, I don't think that the black candle will remove the spikes on the door because I'm pretty sure this is forced by the game itself. Honestly, I'd really like to know about this, but right now as I'm recording this commentary, the Binding of Isaac wiki just decided to randomly go down and not being able to load at all, so hopefully I'll be able to learn more about this whenever this update will be done. So yeah, for this one update, I once again changed the resolution of the game, and holy shit, this is the worst change I've had yet. 
Right now the game is running exactly at 720p, but the odd really, really look weird. It's like almost all of it just steps into the actual field of game itself. Not entirely sure how to describe it, but whenever you switch the resolution of the game, nothing just seemed to pretty much scale up the same way, so now it just seems as if everything is way too small. Oh, and this is why you always should pay a visit into any of the challenge rooms, because you never know whenever you'll get something nice out of it. We got Infestation 2, and this makes it so that whenever you kill an enemy, he'll transform into spiders. All in all, really good stuff, especially compared to regular Infestation, which just made it so that you will spit out flies after being hurt, but hey. This one rewards you for killing things, as opposed for the other that just rewards you for being killed by enemies. Oh yeah, that's right, one thing that I completely forgot to know this, you also start with child's art in this one challenge. This can also be useful toward you, because this increases the chances that you'll get hearts from this challenge, and once again, you'll get hurt in every single room, so it's pretty much a good bet for you to have. So, while we're talking about health, there's a couple of items that you can get into this one challenge, which will make this challenge incredibly easy. The first one of them will be the Holy Mantle. Every single time you're into a new room, you're allowed to take one hit without taking any damage. So, as long as you don't get hit by the enemies, you're not going to get hit by the doors neither, so you can manage to do a run where you're not gonna take any damage in one long flawless run of the game. Also, for some reason I really seem bent on having sad bombs a whole lot lately. Which is good because, hey, my bombs are already pretty damn powerful, but unfortunately my tears are not really that strong right now. Hopefully it's going to change, but without having any kind of devil rooms, I don't think it's something that will likely happen. I could be buying a soul heart right now, but honestly at this point I'm just going to instantly lose it, so I don't really think that it's much of a concern. At this point I'm more concerned about getting hearts on the go as I'm going forward, and no we're not trading our child's heart for this skull which serves absolutely no purpose. It's like, when you get to half a heart, well you just teleport back to the room that you came from. Honestly, apart from going into dead ends and at places where you don't want to be, it's not really useful in any kind of way. Oh yeah, also did we see this boss so far? I'm pretty sure it's one of the first times we fought him into his lair. But at this point, maybe we fought him also a couple of updates ago and I completely forgot about it because at this point some of these updates are just kind of blending in really really well. But yeah, in overall, Polysophus is a pretty nice boss, I like him. He has a nice variety of attack, like this three-way shot that just goes uh, at diagonals and stuff. He also has a shit ton of uh, projectiles at a monstro, or he spawns those little dudes that just hide in and out of the ground just like gophers and shoot lasers at you, or, or shots. I'm not sure why I'm calling everything lasers now. But hey, apart from the first level of this run, I don't think I've had any other extra curses laying on top of me, so in overall I'd say that this run is going really well so far. This room is where we can see how horrible this HUD is whenever we play at 720p. Right now, I do not see the heart, which is on the top left corner of the screen. And yet I need it, because yeah, at this point I need the health, but... At least I keep getting batteries in order to keep my health up, so at least we've got that going for. Now, this room might seem intimidating, but most of the time, the green pods will just spit... Yeah, they will just do that. They will spit projectiles that will explode in the huge mass of enemies and will kill everything all at once. So, yeah, at this point I think I was just uh, ignoring the hearts in the middle of the screen just in order to go to this curse room. Even though at this point the curse room is no longer different than any other room that you see.
Now we are reaching one of the points in the run where you'll be glad that you have bombs because if I was to go to this one treasure room which which is on the left I'd probably need to take a shitload of damage in order to go in and out of here but thankfully with the network of room that is all the way down here I can go there without getting hit once because I just need to go to the sacrifice room and I can bomb my way through the secret room and out of the secret room in order to be able to get the treasure. And I'm even saving on keys while I'm at it. Oh, and here's number one in the flesh. The first time that we got it, it was during that one challenge where you had a piss and poop arsenal, but here we finally have it as an actual item. And at this point, I think it's more than welcome because uh, it finally gives me the firepower needed in order to win. Oh. And as long as you get it early enough in the run, you will have some chance to restore some of the loss range that you got back by getting some range up items or items that are just going to make it so that you will increase your shot speed and that will pretty much do the same exact thing. So at this point those options will be useful in order to be able to achieve that. Nope, nope, nope. Totally not useful. At this point, Child's Art is still way more useful. I mean, I could technically get Guppy and everything, but at this point, I'd rather see regular hearts come out of the chest instead of having like one out of out of a five or six chance of getting soul hearts. Nope. This run is all about your regular hearts. Yeah, for the most part, this boss, it doesn't really matter what kind of range that you have because for the most part, his attacks are really easy to avoid apart from like one and even then it's usually telegraph enough so that you have time to uh, sidestep. But if you do not want to take this risk, you can also stand below him in order to force him to use brimstone because this attack is far more telegraph. But with that said, you do whatever you want. It's your fight after that. And every single time that he shuts down the light, it's a free time in order for you to get the, a lot of it in, just because at this point, I don't really think that shutting the lights down do anything in order to impend your progress. So yeah, we have two damage booster, but Cat of Nine Tail prevail because it also increases our shot speed. And both of the damage increases are exactly the same. Pentagram might have given us some extra chance to get to the devil rooms, which probably would have been nice, but at this point I think that having the extra shot speed is way more important. Because the extra shot speed will always be here in order to help you, whereas the extra devil deals, honestly they're not going to be that useful anymore considering that we only have one last shot at getting a devil deal before this challenge is over. Now, unfortunately, this lucky coin was not very lucky, but hey, at least the slot machine itself was pretty lucky. So now I have to debate, should I actually bother to go to the treasure room? Honestly, it's even more further away than it was when I last turned it away, but at this point, I'm pretty close to the end of this challenge, and I believe I have what it takes in order to not die. Yeah, the four dice room rerolls all items that are on pedestals, but for this one challenge it's completely useless because, well, normally you'd want to see what the items that are offered to you by the boss and the treasure room is before you go and accept this, but considering that we take damage every single time that we leave a room, it's not gonna happen. And Paperclip is a good trinket, but unfortunately we cannot abandon the child's art once again. Alright, it's time to go down and slow to a crawl. We're really really slow right now, but hey, Thunder Ties give you some extra health, so we're still going to take it. Yeah, at this point I'm having trouble just to avoid everything. And the world is completely useless for this one playthrough because we already have all of the map filled up for us. The only time we're not going to have a world map is if we get Curse of the Lost or if we are unlucky enough to munch an amnesia pill. Honestly, 
I think for this one challenge, it would be wise to just avoid pills altogether because some of them can screw you up really bad. And here's the bloat, we're fighting him into his arena. He's essentially peep, but way, way, way worse. The biggest problem with him is that he's got a couple of really nasty brimstone attacks, and also he starts the fight with his two eyes popped out of his entire body, circling around the entire room in order to hit you. The worst thing that can happen within this fight is if the bloat occupies the top of the screen, because standing on top of him is the safest way to not trigger his brimstone. But if you have to deal with that, then you have to stay as little as possible from the sides and below him because his brimstone attack is not telegraph in the slightest, so you have to be really careful about it. And yeah, we picked up magic scab because stem cells only give you extra health, but the magic scab gives you extra health and finally it also gives us extra luck, so that means we're going to find more items during the end of this run and at this point we should be able to succeed. That is, if I know how much health I have, because I got Curse of the Unknown. That will be pretty dangerous to get. Oh, and we have a trinket here. I'm going to swap this, however, because if I somehow lose all of my health, then it's actually going to be more useful than the child's art. Basically, what the monkey paw does is, every single time you're reduced to half a heart, it will drop a black heart for us, but it will only activate three times, so one time for each fingers. Hopefully we'll be able to see this trinket in action into some other playthroughs of the game. But suffice to say, this is a trinket that can pretty much save your butt if you're into a really sticky situation. Or whenever you're fighting pretty bad fights like this one where you're really really slow and you can't really avoid the moving teratoma segments which by the way whenever you collide into them they deal a full heart of damage so they're really nasty also i have no clue what the hell i'm doing here why did i try to bomb this wall i have the map for crying out loud Oh, unfortunately, I wish that we had this item in some other playthrough, because this is a really magical item, but I'm not really allowed to use it in this one playthrough. What it does is, it can teleport you either to the treasure room, the secret room, the super secret room, or the fabled I am Hero room, which I don't think that we've seen so far, but... Essentially, whenever you get teleported, you have a slight chance to go in a room which is full of items and will put an end to your floor. Sometimes it will be helpful, but right here it will be a detriment because we'd outright miss the trigger that will put an end to the challenge and we'd go to the room. Do you really want to go to the womb with Curse of the Curse where the doors will deal a full heart of damage to us? Uh, no thanks. So we're just going to fight mom here and be done with it. And yeah, this is blue mom, and the difference with it is that it'll only spawn enemies that you see in the expansion Rat of the Land. And these enemies are for the most part a whole lot harder, so by that extent she's a whole lot more annoying and difficult to deal with than your regular variety mom. And yeah, we have the negative here. This is the item that we unlocked last playthrough, but... Right here, I'm not gonna elaborate much on it because the playthrough is over and don't worry, we'll see it again, uh, again and again and again. And yeah, we get the credit card whenever you finish this unlock. It's a really nice item, you'll like it. So, we're done with challenge 10, Curse. And after doing a challenge with Maggie, it's time to finally do the proper playthrough with Maggie in the next update.